Hello, my name is Willa DeRoven and I'm going to show you how to use Fiji ImageJ tracking software. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get a video. Um, I'm going to use this uh, stock image of cells moving. Um, you're most likely using this for a project, so whatever project video you have, this is going to be for tracking non-circular objects such as cells moving or fish swimming like I'm going to be eventually using or any kind of um, small movements that you want to be tracking. So first, like let's say it's in an MOV file, the first thing you have to do is convert your file. So we're going to be using um, Convertio. So let's say mine was eventually before in a .movie file because I was fo um, recording it. I downloaded it from online um, or you might be using photo booth or whatever you may be using. Um, the extension that you have to have the file for Fiji or ImageJ has to be .avi, right? So you're going to use Convertio. You're going to choose files. Let's just say I want my old video. I'm using it before the .avi. I upload it. You're going to change it to video. Avi, it has to be an Avi. Right now, I actually got stuck here and I couldn't, I kept having a problem after I converted it because you actually have to go into settings and change the code. So whatever code C this may be, um, it has to be MJPEG. So you have to change that. If you don't and you try um, just converting it without that, it's going to say unsupported compression. And I had been struggling with that for days until... Um, a friend helped me with this. So please make sure that your CoC is in MJPEG. Then you're going to convert. I already converted, so I'm going to save you the time of downloading. But so now if you're using the website, it works almost identically. You're just going to open up the Fiji software. This is image J, by the way. Same thing. They're almost like the same thing. I don't know why they have two different names. Okay. Anyways, you're going to get this. Um, once you download it and add it there, or you just use the website, you're going to see this. Um, because I'm using a Mac, my image process analyst plugins window, like I have a little uh, screen part that has a bunch of options. It's actually up top. I don't think you can see it on the screen recording. If you're using the website, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're on Mac, you should see, and you're opened in this, you should see something else pop up. You should see like image process analyze plugins. Um, if you see that, we're going to be using plugins later. This is for tracking. But if you don't see that, that's probably a problem. But it's on my screen. I just don't think you can see it. So you're going to take your file and you're going to drop it in. The first thing you're going to need to do is convert to grayscale. It has to be in grayscale. TrackMate does not read in uh, RBG. So you have to make sure you're in um, grayscale. Let's say uh, there's about 24 frames per second. So if I want like four seconds, I'll do like 96. Or maybe if you need two seconds, you'll do like 48. Whatever you need, press OK. And then boom, this pops up. This is my grayscale video here. I'm just going to, oh, OK. I'm um, just going to tuck that to the side. Looks a little odd. OK, I'll put that back. Ooh. OK, so here we go. Um, I'm going to click plugins. It should be at the top of your screen. I'm just going to click it. This should come down. If you're in, if, like I said, if you're on the website, it is going to look a little different, but it's relatively going to look just like this. So you're going to click track me. You're going to click tracking and then you're going to click track me, right? The next thing you're going to have to say is yes. Do you want to swap Z and T? Yes. Don't know what that does, but it is important. So make sure you do that. And then this will come up. So this is just an overview. Um, this is counting in units of pixels and frames. You might be using nanometers or whatever. You m most likely might be using pixels and frames, but sometimes it can it's different. So just make sure you know what you're using. Let's just organize this because this can get messy. Okay, it's just my frame rate. You're gonna click next. The next thing you have to do is make sure that you're using threshold detector. There's a couple objects here. Um, you have to use threshold detector because we're using grayscale and it's just kind of going to be detecting this light against the dark, right? Okay. I'm just going to click next. And then it's going to say all of this. Um, this kind of is this next stepping stone to make sure that it's going to be tracking everything correctly. And if you see something wrong, this is where would be the first sign that it's not tracking right. So you're going to say just auto, 
whatever. You have to make sure that Simplify Contours is on so you don't get something ridiculously messy. And you're just going to press Preview. As you can see, when I first started this, I when I first downloaded this, I thought that TrackMate would be using and tracking the direct cells. Um, as you can see, no it's not. It's actually tracking each and every distinct little bright dot. So you have to make sure that you know what it's going to be tracking. You can kind of suspect I was a little bit of a newbie at this before. Still am, haha. <laughs> but you have to make sure that you know it's tra what it's tracking. If your images are a lot simpler than these massive bright dots, you're going to get a lot simpler um, lines here than this craziness. But I thought it looked cool, which is why I didn't use a simpler video. But this looks about right. So we're just going to increase. We're just, sorry, not increase. going to go next. Then this is going to download. Some people don't have this. I have this. If you do have this, great. Just let it load. Boom. Great. Next. Ooh, next. Um, then we have this. Auto. Just kind of, um, not that much to do here. Just, um, no need to do anything, so you're just going to do next. Then once you get, get here, there's a lot of options here. This is quality. So, um, it's just going through. Oh, it's calculating. Let's just let it calculate first. But, um, auto, what auto does is auto might select specific objects, as you can see. I don't have that much I'm looking at, so I'm not going to select a specific object. But, sorry, we're just going to let this run. I have a lot of images here that need to be tracked, so yours, if you're not tracking as many small dots like I am, is probably going to be a lot faster. These are cells. I don't know what these small dots are, just random particles. <laughs> load, load, load. Sorry, this is taking a while. Just let it load. Okay. As you can see, so what this does, it just specifies certain spots um, um, by like um, quality. You can add things, so like radius. This is going to um, only track things by radius. So like as you can see, the more I get closer to the edge, the more things I'm tracking versus here. Um, this is just kind of like the, another way, but there's a bunch of other things you can track it by. Um, I'm not going to be using this, so I'm not, I'm just going to remove it. If you are, that's great. And then the next thing you can do is you're going to want to change color spots to, um, down here it's track index so you're just going to click track index and then this will eventually change colors um you're not going to see it right now it's going to stay black and white but what the track in it's going to change colors by the track index and that's going to help you like differentiate um between different objects that you're tracking because i'm tracking like 10,000 objects it's going to look like a big rainbow if you're tracking five, there'll be five different colors. But in the case that you're tracking like a thousand different little dots like me, you're going to see, see a repeat of different colors, but you know what I mean. And then you're just going to click next. Next. And then you have this, right? Select a tracker. We're going to be using um, lap tracker because the objects are randomly moving. These are going down, but I don't exactly know when they're moving, so that's why we're using lap. Next, lap tracker, um, frame to frame linking. Not that much here, you just have a bunch of different objects. Gap closing, segment splitting, um, segment merging. The max distance allows like linking to occur. So if you like really care about that this would be something to look at like if your tracks are separating um or not because i don't have any missing objects objects that are like going out of frame i'm just gonna unselect that i don't need that um but there are a bunch of other options that you can explore here then we go here once again gotta let it load oh yeah here we go 
here we go. Oh, by the way, don't forget to click that. Don't forget to not click that because I, this is my uh, second video and I forgot to unclick that and my track thing did not come to this. In fact, it didn't track it at all. So like I said, these little checks are important. Make sure you're checking the right stuff. But here we go. As you can see, it's intense. We're tracking a lot of things. You can, I think it was really cool. You can kind of see the cells moving, the different tracking um, things in there. Big color, a lot of intensity here. That's why I said, not really, I don't need to specify, like I'm not gonna change any gaps that I see. Or like um, a lot of times you might have, like if you're tracking fish, for example, like I might be, the fish might run into each other. Sometimes track mate gets confused and combines the track. So you that's gonna be important, like other settings if you're working on that, but this is just a test run. And I'm not gonna, take a good look into this but you're just gonna let it load go next as you can see there's a lot of stuff here so um, this number is gonna be the number of spots and tracks so as you can see the lower I bring this the less it's tracking so as you can see like this is really intensive but maybe I don't want it to be that intense maybe I don't want to track as much stuff um, so I'm gonna bring it lower like I think this one was my favorite around here oh wait no maybe around here so as you can see like it's kind of eating away the tracks um i can set different filters on it um this is number of spots in track let me just memorize that number of spots in track i can do a uh, number of complex points whoa yeah that's a lot i could do uh number of merge events track id wow track displacement all these different things are gonna track different things these are your filters we're just gonna keep it at number of spots and track right that was the right one before right yeah that looks right but you know what? I'm gonna make it a little more complex why not um and then it's just colored by track here click next um, there's a bunch of options here, like display track radius, blah, 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 display track name. So each track has a different ID, as you can see, because I have like thousands of tracks here, because this is a really complex image. Maybe this isn't the best example to be using, but I think it looks cool. So that's what we're using. Um, I have different track IDs. If you have like 15 different things you're tracking, there's only going to be 15 IDs. So don't worry about the crazy numbers you're seeing at you most likely won't doing that unless you're tracking some complex image like me um just just anything here that you want to change um you can do that but i'm gonna keep it the same next here is my favorite part here's what's most likely going to be the most useful to you um spots links tracks you can plot these features so like let's say i want to go to tracks Feature, it gives you a feature for X and a feature for a Y. So like, let's say I want to track maybe um, total distance trap. Let's say, let's do track ID to total distance travel to plot features. That's where I said it, it kind of gets messy around here because you're going to want to, like if you're collecting data, you can collect super different kinds of data simply from these uh, this plot feature right here. So it also helps you, I have like a lot of tracks, so I find this kind of beneficial. It's kind of why I wanted to use this particular um, uh, stock image, because if you look, I have like thousands of little different, each little red dot is a track. So like all these colors represent one track with a different ID. So it's just track ID versus the distance traveled. So the ones that are traveling more are gonna be up here and the ones that are traveling less are gonna be down here towards the bottom of the graph. Um, why I like this? It'd be because it helps you see a lot of patterns. So as we can see right around here, there seems to be a gap in what is that, like the uh, late 1000s. Um, I'm not gonna attempt to analyze what that means because that looks pretty hard. But if you have maybe um, a lot of um, tra like a lot of um, subjects and they're much easier to read, this graph kind of helps you analyze like um, what went wrong or where the differentiations here 
Um, like, let's just tuck that in the corner. Plot feature. Oh, same thing. I can make um, longest gap. Oh, same thing. Maybe there's just no ID. There's just not any ID numbers here. But that's just an example. Like, it helps you see patterns easily. Or maybe track max speed. Wow. As you can see, um, that's a lot. Most, uh, most, it looks like there's not a lot of differentiation here, except right in this weird gap around the 17, we're seeing a lot of that. That, I really like having a thousands because it helps you see weird gaps, but as you can see, the speed ranges from around, like, 2 pixels per frame to 15 pixels per frame, so it's, it looks pretty evenly spread out, no not a lot of patterns there except that these weird streaks that keep appearing. So maybe there just isn't an index. That's what I think. But there's a lot of options you can do here and it really helps for same thing with links at spot. It really helps for like analyzation of your data and other stuff like that. Next, this is where um, you're going to get your raw image from. Like this is how you're going to export a lot of times capture overlay. I'm just going to execute it. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, just gonna let it load. And this is kind of how I'm gonna import this data. So like, if example, I want this, all this data going on my um, presentation board or I want it going in my research paper, this is kind of how you extract it. There's a couple other options you can choose from. Export to this, extract stack, whatever. I don't know what that means. Plot in spots versus time, but there's a bunch of objects here, but we're just doing capture overlay because it gets me this. Boom. Very, very, very nice. I don't really need that. There's one spot in here. I'm just gonna look for it. Color tracks by, show, here we go. I really like this feature. This is just um, uh, if you wanna be a little picky about how your tracks show up like I am. I like to do tracks forward. Oh, actually, maybe I don't. Yeah, I do. Wait, is it the backwards one? No. Um, I like the forward in time because if you look, um, basically what it does is it shows the entire track, but as the object moves down the track in time, it's going to like decrease. So like you kind of, if like, it looks like it's eating the track away. I really like that because it shows you where the object is going. Um, but if you're like something else, you can change the track motion. This is just like, if you're picky and you want it to be viewed a little differently, this is show tracks local in time. Um, looks pretty similar to the rest, but show time, um, tracks backwards in time. So this one, as it's moving, it's leaving a track behind it. Kind of looks like falling meteor showers, but, um, that intro selection is always just like no tracks at all. If you're trying to select certain, oh, certain tracks. Fun. So like right here with the circle, I'm only showing these tracks. But I don't really want to do that. I want to see all of them. So we're just going to do forward. Oh, I guess that stayed. But whatever. Um, next, next, next. And I capture my overlay. But as you can see, I can watch the tracks go. I don't know why that hasn't disappeared yet. So be careful with that. But a lot of this takes exploring. Um, it looks pretty complicated at first. And you might run into some issues. But just work through it. Keep trying. Because it's generally a pretty easy thing to use. Um, I really like it. The software and it allows a lot of versatility and great graphs like this is my <coughs> favorite feature right here thank you for listening and have a great day